today is just going to be a chill video, no projects or anything. I'm just going to talk about how I went from dropping out of college and working at a gas station to now working at a, as a software developer at 21 years old. Okay, so I, I'm going to start just kind of with my background and things like that. And then I'm going to talk to you guys all about the different resources that I used along the way. So you guys can go from wherever you're at, whether you know any code at all, to the exact kind of same position, either in web development, software development, anything you guys want to do. Um, and then, yeah, I just want to let you guys know that it's completely possible. It's completely within your power to do it. And all you need to do is set aside the time and the motivation and find the motivation in yourself in order to do something like this. So, okay, guys, so a little bit on my background. I am 21 years old. I went to college. I got went to college around like 18 for a semester, ended up dropping out because I wasn't happy. I wasn't learning the things that I wanted to learn. None of what I was learning was hands on. And that's what I wanted to be doing. I felt like I was wasting my time there. So I left and I immediately started working at a gym, uh, worked there for a little under a year, left there, uh, started working at, at like a couple other things, doing personal training, a little bit of that, ended up working at a gas station and then uh, selling computer hardware for a little while. So a bunch of little things along the way, guys. But what kind of got me through all that to where I am right now is that I've always had kind of a passion for computers. Uh, when I was younger, I took a programming class in uh, Java back in like, I think like sophomore year of high school. And at the time that was super hard for me. I had like no clue. I was looking at this stuff. I remember putting in like five and six hours at night. And this is like when I'm a sophomore in high school guy. So I'm like, this is too much, right? I'm like, I can't be doing this, right? So I, that was like, that was trying to learn Java. And I ended up not even being able to get through that class. But at the same time, that always was like a little chip on my shoulder. I was like, or ended up being a chip on my shoulder. Cause I was like, God, I was like, come on, man. Like you had to do that. Like you got to learn this stuff. And so I kept pushing. I mean, I, as far as computers go, I, after that, I was super interested in hacking and things like that. So I kept looking into stuff like that. How can I build like a botnet? How can I hack like Facebook? How can I hack all these different things? Right. Cause it'd be, that seemed like super cool to me when I was younger. I'd see the movies with like these hackers and I was like, Whoa, man, like totally want to be doing that kind of thing. But anyways, that's what kind of spurred my passion with that. Um, I, I started looking into things like networking. I started looking into things like um, basically like how, how the web works, how these things work. Cause I started doing some research and things and it was like, I was finding out like, well, shit, it's not as easy as sitting down and just like typing this stuff with your green terminal. And all of a sudden you're in the mainframe and withdrawing millions of dollars. And it's like, it doesn't work like that. So anyway, so you started learning these, these new things here about how the internet really works, how things started coming together. And then I realized that in order to uh, become like any kind of like a hacker quote unquote or uh, a web developer or a software developer or anything you had to you gotta learn code so at the time I was like all right I, I know I, I failed back in high school with Java but now I need to come back this is probably like 18 years old now I was right around when I went to college initially I started getting back into this and I was like okay I need to focus now I need to get this done and we're gonna make it happen like I, I have to learn how to code okay so guys I started off with Python so Python is again like I talk about this a lot on the channel, but Python is a freaking awesome language to start with. It's super easy. It's, uh, it can do so many things. It can do everything from hacking to web development, to artificial intelligence, to a lot of different things. Okay. So Python is awesome to learn. Awesome to start with. Um, and how did I start like learning Python? Well, I started right here on code Academy. So again, this is a resource you probably hear, like talked about a lot. Um, I talked about a lot just from people's recommending resources and some of these resources that I'm going to recommend are like just like that are things that like people talk about all the time as being like okay this is a great resource right uh, like go start with this and you go and you do that and like you get done with that and you're like okay well shit well here I am now what right well this is so I'm going to say a couple of those but then I'm going to throw in some other stuff that you guys might not have heard of that is definitely uh important resources so anyways code academy awesome to start with um I started off learning python through code academy here I would just sit down every night and I would or not every night every other night and I would just start le learning a little bit of Python learning some of the syntax here and there like 
printing out like my first like hello world thing that was so cool and like all this other stuff you can do it was awesome right so like i i remember like how awesome that was guys and that was like i mean that's part of why i'm here right now is like trying to teach and trying to share this with you guys is because like it's so cool when you get it to really work and it's so awesome when you get that feeling like okay i'm making progress here i'm doing things i wasn't able to do before i'm understanding things that i wasn't able to understand before and so anyways that's uh, that's a bit of a tangent but that's why i'm I'm here right now. But anyways, Code Academy, super great. Uh, good for good learning like general syntax, first few things, uh, kind of like an introduction to programming, all right? Uh, next up here, Free Code Camp, really good. So I started learning Python. I started trying to learn Python specifically for networking, specifically for trying to like write like brute force scripts for like passwords and things like that and like video game bots. I was super into like League of Legends at the time. So I was thinking like, okay, how can I do some scripting and write like a video game bot or like do some scripting for League of Legends stuff, which again is not like people say don't do that. So I ended up, I'm not, I'm not, I didn't end up doing that. It's not good for the game or whatever, but I wanted to do that. And like, okay, so next up here, um, free code camp. So free code camp is really good for JavaScript. So you, eventually guys, if you want to do anything web related, you're going to need to learn JavaScript and JavaScript can be used for either servers. JavaScript can be used for the front end. Uh, JavaScript can be used for so much stuff. Now desktop applications, there's a package called like electron. You can make desktop applications with JavaScript, but anyways, JavaScript is really good. You can do AI with it now too. Google just released tensorflow.js, which is like tensorflow, but for JavaScript. So you can run, uh, AI models in your browser, which is super cool. But anyways, JavaScript is really good. Uh, Free Code Camp teaches that. Um, Free Code Camp also teaches other things here, like okay, Git and GitHub, super super essential. You need to understand these things if you want to do this as a profession. Uh, Git and GitHub are used. I use that on an everyday basis. 90% of software developers use this on an everyday basis. This is for storing different versions of your projects. Um, understand Git push, understand Git merge, understand Git clone, basically how to pull uh, data down from GitHub, how to push it back up, how to make changes, how to keep track of your versions, things like that. Um, yeah, so that's this is really good. This resource is excellent for learning these kind of things here. Um, React as well. Uh, that's the next thing I'm gonna touch on. So. Uh, React is really important. Well, not React specifically, but you, if you're going to do web development as a profession, you need to learn how, a framework, okay? So you need to learn HTML, CSS, um, JavaScript, and then some kind of web framework. It doesn't matter if that's React, Vue, um, or Angular, okay? Uh, I would recommend React, to be honest, but it doesn't matter because they all follow the same kind of component-based architecture, okay? That means you make little pieces so you can plug them in and really keep track of everything easily without having just big freaking files of JavaScript. You don't want that, okay? So anyways, learn, if you want to do web development, learn JavaScript, HTML, CSS, um, React, Vue, or Angular, and make three projects, an e-commerce website, um, a portfolio website and a social media website with a database um, with those things you want to learn as database SQL as well. I'll talk about resources for that in just a second, but I'm just kind of putting web development in a package for you guys right now. Learn those things, build those projects. You're good to go. Start applying to jobs. Okay. So that, that sums up that um, again, free code camp, really good for that. Highly recommend this next up here. Um, Udemy. And I actually pulled up um, this one specifically here with Steven Greider. Steven Greider does really freaking good courses on React, okay? React is probably the best, like, okay, I say the best, but, and well, yeah, no, I think it is the best. React is the best framework out of Angular and Vue. Um, it can be used now for so many different things. There's, I just found a library the other day for using it for desktop applications as well, same syntax. So React is like the framework you guys wanna learn right now if you're getting started. Uh, don't bother with Angular or Vue. You can always transition into those more easily once you learn React. It's a lot like um, transitioning programming languages. The, a lot of the same principles are the same. It's just some syntax differences. Okay, so React is really good here. And Steven Greider just freaking hit it out of the park with these courses here. So Modern React with Redux, excellent course. I took that one myself. Um, and there's another one here, uh, Node with React, Full Stack Web Development, another very good one. You guys wanna learn how to use a database, okay? And whether that is um, MySQL or a NoSQL database, 
um, like Mongo here, you want to learn how to build uh, databases, how schemas work, because that's a fundamental part of web development as well. Every major web application that you use that isn't just a regular static website or is pulling, storing any data about you is using a database. OK, so you've got to learn how to use a database as well. Um, so, yeah, that is that is that right there. And again, Udemy guys has so many courses and I actually I haven't taken a ton of courses on Udemy specifically, but if they're anything like the quality of this of these few like phew, thumbs up for sure. Um, OK, next up here. So, guys, I was also so I've talked a little bit about hacking. I've talked a little bit about web development. I want to talk about AI and machine learning. That is my favorite thing out of anything programming related related is 100% artificial intelligence and machine learning. What is possible with this stuff is absolutely incredible and is going to completely revolutionize the world that we live in for the next 10 to 20 years uh, and specifically in this stretch and probably even more uh, past that just as this, as the tech evolves. But anyways, this is super important stuff to learn. And if you do try to learn this, it's, it's going to really take your understanding of, um, we'll say computers and even better, like your, we'll say conceptual understanding of structure. Um, that's like a really big thing when you're doing any kind of software development or software engineering, the understanding of how a program comes together, you guys will soon see is oftentimes harder than just programming itself. Like programming eventually is going to become something where you guys are just, you just, you program, right? You come up with an idea, you know how to, you understand the, the, the concepts of programming. You go ahead, you Google a thing here and there, how to get there, but you're always going to get to what you need to do because you know what to do with code, right? But the harder thing is understanding the overall architecture of whatever you're trying to make. So a lot of the times things like some web applications and especially I'm talking about this now with like machine learning and things some of these um some of these programs and these applications are uh goliaths in size they are freaking huge and to keep track of everything and to continue to effectively write code and not double backtrack and keep things modular and by modular i mean broken down into into pieces that you can pull out and insert new pieces wherever you want without the whole thing just collapsing in on itself. That is the harder part. Okay. That's what you guys are going to learn. And that's what comes with experience. So I'm kind of going off on a tangent here. I was supposed to be talking about machine learning. Um, so I'm going to go back to talking about machine learning and then we're going to come back to talking about structure at the end and how you guys can like get a better understanding of how structure works. So Okay, so machine learning. Um, this course here, if you guys are interested in anything machine learning and artificial intelligence related, uh, this course is, is again, absolutely incredible. This is probably the best resource you will find. Um, well, one of the best two that you will find, excuse me, for learning how to do machine learning. So this was, this was taught by Andrew, uh, I think I can never pronounce his name, right? I think it's Andrew Carpathy or Andre Car Carpathy, but he's the director of AI at Tesla right now, guys. He is one of the rising stars or one of not even a rising star anymore. He is a star in machine learning. He, um, and he taught this whole, this whole course here at, at Stanford, which was talking about all the different kinds of specific to deep learning here, but uh, a lot of different things to do with deep learning and machine learning. Uh, deep learning is a subset of machine learning and AI. But um, essentially here, we got things like uh, visual recognition, image classification, um, convolutional neural networks, deep reinforcement learning, generative models. These are um, anything that you hear about that has to do with deep learning are using most of the are using. Uh, well, deep learning specifically is using neural networks these days um, or uses neural networks. And let's see here and like deep reinforcement learning, everything you heard about recently with or may have heard about with AlphaGo coming out of Google, um, the one that plays all the Atari games coming out of Google. These are deep reinforcement learning algorithms. So these are this is stuff that's like state of the art guys. This is being worked on right now at the top um, computer research labs around the world working on these things. And this course is going to teach you all about that. Um, this guy right here. Let's see if he shows up. Oh, this is, oh, this might be Fei-Fei Lee's. Okay. Um, where's Andrew Carpathy's? Anyways, guys, CS231N. Um, where is it? Yeah, here it is. Okay. So this guy right here, guys, he's the guy. He's awesome. Okay. 
So yeah, check out this CS231N for anything machine learning, artificial intelligence related. Why I'm telling you guys this, um, again, this is like a whole wide, broad uh, variety of topics, right? But why I'm talking about this is because, guys, when it comes down to it, anything that interests you that has to do with programming, pursue that. Um, and that's going to give you the passion. It's going to fuel you with the passion to be able to uh, see it to the end, right? And when you see things to the end, that's when you see the improvements. When you hit the first few roadblocks and you go and you, you might spend hours Googling stuff on Stack Overflow and it's going to get really frustrating. But when you push through that, you're going to look back and that's what gives it meaning. That's what makes it important. And that's what makes the whole process worth it. Okay, guys, anything that you have to work for that comes easily, it, it just doesn't feel, it doesn't feel like important I mean maybe this is maybe this is just me guys let me know if this is you guys too but anything that comes super easily to you guys or to me is not something that's important to me when you work hard for something and when you set a goal and you achieve it and you look back and you can see the different levels of your own understanding and how you progressed that's what makes things important that's what makes um, software awesome that's what makes light life awesome right that's my opinion anyways but okay um, I started talking off about hacking and networking. This guy is again, super good. This is Eli, the computer guy. Um, he does more like talks about, um, like we'll say like current events and stuff now, but if you guys go back to like his 2012, 2013 videos as well, those are also really good. So we've got things like, uh, he talks about Linux servers, uh, PHP programming, web design, data recovery. He talks about things that are a lot more like server related. Um, these things are definitely going to help, uh, could br bring that larger conceptual understanding. Okay. And that's again, something that's really important. That is part of programming and software development, software engineering is having that large conceptual understanding of the processes that are happening, where they can be improved, what can be pulled out, everything like that. Okay. So Eli, the computer guy, fantastic resource. Next up here, guys, for Python programming specifically, Centex. This guy rocks as well. I know I showed you guys back to back several YouTube resources, but YouTube is really good, guys. That's why I mean that's why I decided to go with like YouTube instead of like a blog or something is because YouTube allows you that I feel like one more one on one interaction with you guys. Like you get to really talk with your with your uh, with your community. You get to build a community around things that you love, and it's a different it's a different feeling. But anyways, guys, this guy is really good. Um, he does everything from like AI stuff. He's done some stuff with general adversarial networks recently. Um, taught, teaching like languages like Go. Um, he just uh, taught, he taught like a, a, a GTA five card to drive itself. Um, super cool stuff. He does some, some data processing, um, we'll say like trading. So that's another thing I wanted to talk to you guys about. That was another thing along with the hacking stuff initially is that I wanted to learn how to trade and I was trying to trade like um, well, futures contracts are sort of like stocks, but they're a little more, they move a little more price goes up and down a little more and it's a little more like dangerous to trade, but you can make a lot more money with it. But anyways, I was trying to figure out how to trade that. And I was seeing like, wow, there are so many, um, there's a lot of opportunity here, but there is, um, I'm competing against people that are like, that are like, have a lot of money and have a lot more knowledge and have a lot more expertise. And more than that are using computers to execute their trading strategies. And everything can be automated basically every every strategy you can imagine can be automated really so it's like that is something that i was like okay i gotta pause trying to learn how to hand hand do this stuff and i gotta figure out how to program i'm gonna program my own trading strategies right so that's why that was another big thing i started off with but anyways um back to python um automate the boring stuff with python super great book um, I know the guy who wrote this actually left a comment the other day. So shout out to you, man. This was an awesome book. Like, thank you for writing this. And there's a lot of really great content in here, you guys. There's a lot of great things. Anything you want to learn with Python, once you learn that basic syntax, say like you go from Code Academy, uh, after you finish Code Academy, and maybe you've learned like um, a, little, a little more than that, but really even going from Code Academy to this, you can do that. Go from Code Academy to automate the boring stuff with Python. And you guys are gonna already be well on your way to being Python developers. Like that is, these are really great resources here, okay? And you can expound on these. You can, this shows you not only uh, good projects to start with, but it, gives, it can give you ideas for how you might be able to grow these into something you wanna make yourself, like a software as a service, or like a microservice online, or anything you wanna do, writing scripts for people, selling any kind of freelance Python uh, development that you wanna do. Okay, so automate the boring stuff with Python, super good. 
Next up here, Code Wars. Also really good. Uh, guys, good thing to do is to test yourself with algorithms. So a lot of the things, and particularly if you're self-taught, that you don't necessarily get exposed to are algorithms that traditional computer science majors are going to learn, okay? These are things like linked lists, heap sorting, uh, a bunch of different things you can do that are that you don't necessarily get taught on a daily basis. While I'm talking about this, actually, um, CS Dojo. This guy right here also has a super great channel. So shout out to this dude. Um, he he does some Python stuff. He also does, um, let's see here. Uh, where's his algorithm stuff? This guy does algorithm stuff. Okay, there it is. Data structures and algorithms. So this guy has really good stuff here as well, guys. Linked list, recursion. Um, and he does some other stuff as well. But yeah, anyways, guys, data structures are really important, especially if you want to work at something like Microsoft or Google. They are very traditional in the kind of things that they are going to ask you. And a lot of those things come down to uh, very technical engineering questions related to data structures and algorithms. And so that's something very uh, important to understand and learn. For web development, not as much, but it's always good to have as much computer expo uh, we'll say computer literacy and exposure to various topics as possible. Okay, so that that's another one. Excellent. Back to Code Wars. These are really good programs that are like mini algorithms that you can train your brain to get good at. Um, again, you can do these in any kind of language here. Um, JavaScript, Python, like all these different languages here. PHP uh, is another like big one for web development stuff. TypeScript is, is coming up here for, for JavaScript. Crystal Lang, that's another cool one. Haskell, uh, but any, a lot of good languages there um, that will give you these quite little mind teasers. These are something that's great to wake up in the morning with and be like, all right, let's do this. You know, uh, This is a great thing to test your everything from just like various, um, I will say like dictionary methods to list methods to a lot of different things that you guys can do here. Um, so that's good. And finally, guys, um, Stack Overflow. So this is the most important resource you will ever use as a programmer, um, in addition to the documentation of whatever libraries or languages you're using. But Stack Overflow has the answer to almost every technical question that you can imagine. If you can't find the answer, ask it and someone will come and answer for you. This is such an awesome community and such an awesome resource. Like this right here is like freaking the big, like this is like one of the backbones of software development and in the whole world, right? Like Stack Overflow makes things happen. Okay, guys, so Stack Overflow is where you go anytime you get stumped. So now that I've shared a lot of these resources here, um, I wanna talk to you guys about like the different things. Like, so just overall strategy, where do you go from here? We've got like eight, 10 resources. Where do you start? Where do you go, okay? So find something that interests you. That's the most important thing you can do, okay? So whether that be hacking, machine learning, web development, um, I got video game bots, social media bots, scripting, trading systems. There's so many different things that you can do with programming, uh, basic automation tasks. There's so many things. Find one that interests you, uh, come up with a question about it, and go find the answer to that question, okay guys? You gotta be very like curious, be curious, want that understanding for yourself, okay? There are people walking around with all this understanding, you need to grab some of that understanding away from them and have it for yourself, okay? That's what you need to do. So, find something that interests you, uh, come up with a project you wanna create or a curiosity you, want, you have that you, you need to figure out, and then go ahead and do it, okay? Next up guys, actually code things. Most important of all, actually code things, okay? That is any kind of project you want. Once you come up with that idea, go ahead and build it, right? That's gonna be, um, that's gonna be anything from, geez, scripts, uh, build AI systems, build websites, build social networks, build uh, image hosting web, uh, web net networks, build Instagram clones, Pinterest clones, Facebook clones, whatever you guys wanna do that pushes yourself, consistently push yourself. You're gonna get stuck at these plateaus, but you need to keep uh, coming up with what the next thing you can do is to push through that, right? Always do that. If you don't, you're gonna stagnate and die as a developer and in life. Okay, <laughs> moving on here. Um, study source code. This is super important as well. Um, 
you won't as a self-taught developer you're not going to learn the fundamental um design patterns that kind of make up a lot of the software you use every day unless you kind of take a look at the source code and again most of these things are closed source but there's also a lot of open source software on there okay uh so go ahead and pick out a few libraries that you use every day whether they be like built-in libraries to the language itself um like then go ahead and check those out so things you can say import in your programming language without having to actually um things you can import without having to actually like install an outside package, right? So those are often very well written. Those were written by the people who created the language in the first place. Very good resources. Use them. Study them. Uh, learn design patterns. Learn the, the people who created your language. Learn how they in intended it to be used. Don't necessarily only use it that way, but use that as a as a pillar in your in your learning journey as far as what you can do with the language, how it might work optimally. Okay. So next after that, um, show your passion. This is important. So this is part of the reason I started this YouTube channel again because. For me, it was a huge learning is, is important. The most important thing in my life is learning. Okay. And I wanted to be able to share that with you guys. I wanted to share that with as many people as I can. And this seemed like the way to do that. So that's why I'm here right now. And that's what I would encourage you guys to do as anything in life that you want to accomplish or specifically to software development, share that uh, knowledge, share your passion, share it with the world, because that's how you're going to find opportunity. And that's how you're going to feel fulfilled in life. Okay, guys. So do that, whether that be a blog, whether that be a YouTube channel, whether that be any way that you get out there, starting a, a local meetup, just start attending local meetups at first. Okay, go ahead and share your passion with people who are also passionate about it. And you guys will be surprised about the kind of opportunity opportunity and the kind of things you can create in your life if you do that. Okay. Uh, coming up next. Um, okay. So we've got through all these resources. We've got through like sharing, we've got through most, a lot of the important parts. Okay. Um, when it comes to getting a job, right? Getting a job, making money. How do you translate all this into money? Right? Because these things are great, but it's also great to have money. So what can you do in order to do that? I would say start off freelancing, okay? Whether you're learning like even just basic web development, basic scripting, basic, um, basic anything, okay? Basic automation tasks. Go ahead and find people. There are people out there who don't know what you know, who are willing to pay for it to be done, okay? So whether that be um, posting up a gig on Fiverr um, or Fiverr, I don't know how to pronounce that really, but post up a gig on there, reach out to, but that's a very populated marketplace. It's hard. So reach out to business owners that are local around you, find people that you know, in your community that are starting businesses, or just go ahead and scout out some websites around your area and check out their websites. If they freaking suck, then go ahead and hit them up and make new ones, make them better. People will pay you. Okay. That's one way to make good money. Um, lots of people make their entire living doing just that. So that's one way you can make money. Otherwise, like scripting, say you like Python scripting, people will pay for video game bots, people will pay for social media bots, people will pay for all kinds of different things. Find people that want those things. You can find them on forums, you can find them on Reddit, you can find them on Facebook, you can find them on Quora. Don't ever hesitate to reach out to someone if you see that they express a need, show them how you can fill that for them, show, show them how you can bring them the solution and then decide on a rate for it and you're good to go, you're making money, okay? That's awesome, that's important. Um, if you don't wanna just do that, although that's a great way to start, you want a job, right? So you want a job. Um, most important thing, is to have the projects, is to have, show your passion and have projects. Those are said, the two things that you want to see on a checklist um, for an application. So I would put yourself in the shoes of the person that is hiring where you want to work, okay? An application lands on their desk. What is the first thing they ask themselves? And how do you stand out from the other 100 people that are learning and submitting their applications, right? I would say everyone's going to know how to program. Everyone's going to have some basic projects. So there's one way you can stand out right there is don't have basic projects, have projects that blow that shit right out of the park. Okay. You need to have great projects, two or three fucking phenomenal projects. Okay. And that's, what's going to really stand out. That's, what's going to raise the bar. Okay. That's, what's going to make that person who ends up with the, your resume in their hands be like, okay, this person is different from the other hundred schmucks that I've seen come across my desk. They're going to take that resume and they're going to put it to the side. Right. And so first off have amazing projects, every detail, make it spot on. 
okay? Uh, second, show your passion. Another way you're gonna stand out. There's 100 resumes that come across that desk. Not every one of them is going to have a blog. Not every one of them is going to have a YouTube channel. Not every one of them is going to go above and out of their way to start meetups, to meet up, to bring together people that ha do their that program in their specific language, to express their love through programming, okay? So you guys need to go ahead and find a way where you can stand out above and beyond, whether that be creating meetups, um, creating a blog, creating a YouTube channel, creating anything where you can express uh, and bring together people and stand above and beyond the pack, okay? Because there's always a pack, guys, in anything. There's always a pack, and you always want to be above the pack. You want to be that top 20%. There's that 80-20 Pareto law and that 20% and that's true in anything in life. Basically, that means that like be the top 20% and you reap most of the benefits. Be higher than that, 5%, 1%, you're reaping 99% of the benefits, okay? So that's anything in life, stand out, okay? After that, guys, um, apply to jobs. You got, these dupe, you got these dope projects, you're expressing your passion, um, go ahead and apply to jobs. A apply to 20, 30 a day and do this for a month. And, and if you guys don't, you'll get, it's not even if you don't, you'll get responses, okay? If you have amazing projects and you have a way you've expressed your passion and people will see that, people will recognize that. And it's almost guys like you put out hard work and effort into the world and the world shows you that back, okay? So that's the, probably the most important thing. Put out hard work, put out effort, show your passion, build amazing projects and the benefits will come guys. Okay, so thank you guys like very much for watching. Uh, I know this wasn't the typical video, but I've had some people that have been asking me about this. So uh, yeah, that's where we've, that's my, that's my background. That's how I got to where I am today. And I hope this gives you guys some ideas for how you might achieve the goals that you want to achieve in life and with, with programming, with software, whatever the heck it is. All right, so thank you guys for watching. See you guys later.